Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I have the pleasure of working on one of the all-time classics. This is a Newell fishing reel. It is the Newell 235-5, and it is a reel that uh, is kind of treasured as a collectible and always a joy to fish. Now, uh, this reel belongs to Dave. He brought it into my shop and asked me to do a complete tune-up on it and an upgrade. He wants me to upgrade the bearings to ceramic bearings and he wants me to upgrade the drag washers to carbon tex drag washers. So that'll be part of what I'm showing you today which will include a complete service of the reel and uh, well if you uh, if you like that kind of thing if you want to learn more about fishing reels maybe you have this reel and you want to learn how to take it apart and service it maybe uh, you're just curious about why everybody likes the new reels well stay watching and also I would encourage you to please subscribe to my channel I uh, use the channel as a forum and I also use the channel to show you the reels that come into my shop how to service them and how to uh, keep them running for a long time to come as well as how to uh, service other reels spinning reels and bait casters fresh water salt water all kinds of reels and uh, that's what we'll do here. We'll do the Newell reel here. Well, this is a reel that has a C-clip holding that gear sleeve on and the handle, so that has to come off next after you remove the cap. Generally what I try to do is find one corner of that clip and then use a pick to uh, kind of push it out. And I also try to hold the finger behind it because these things have a tendency to fly when they get right to that point where they're partially removed but not all the way removed. So I'm just going to push this off to one side where I can grab that point with my fingernail, pull the other one back, and that's how you can remove the clip, which I'll show you in just a second here once it's completely out. So that's the clip that has to come off. Don't lose that clip. Uh, they're kind of hard to find and what I do in order to prevent that from happening is I take it and I put it right into a parts tray. Uh, that parts tray keeps me honest in terms of where they are and it also uh, lets me know where they are when it's time to reinstall. Well I had already removed the bearing from this one because we wanted to do the upgrade and I did want to measure the bearing. They had asked specifically for ceramic bearings so I got the uh, the measures, you measure a bearing by the, the width, the inside diameter, and the outside diameter, and uh, that's how you can order. So I went ahead and ordered those. And uh, to get to those bearings and get to the rest of the reel, we have to take all the pieces off. So there's a plastic uh, nut cap piece behind here, kind of a washer. It's uh, kind of embedded in here. There's a washer behind the handle that just fell out. There's a washer, this plastic cap kind of washer here, and then you have the inside of the handle. So all of those pieces are going to go into my parts tray so that I don't lose those. And then we have a bell washer. This one looks like it's upside down, but we have a bell washer next. And then we can remove the star adjuster to get at the side plate. Newell reels were... Uh, Invented by, designed, and manufactured by Carl Newell. He was a, uh, a plastics engineer out in uh, California, a deep sea fishing enthusiast who uh, wanted to take a, uh, what he knew of plastics and design and graphites and the like. And he wanted to take that and combine that with his love of fishing. And uh, he, he developed this reel. Now, a lot of these parts kind of are shared with pen. Uh, for example, if you look at the Carpentex piece here, it says for the pen 500 and also the Newell 200s. So he didn't come up with everything. He said, okay, I'll use the drag washers from the pen uh, Jigmaster. Well, that leads a lot of people to think that Carl Newell worked for pen and that he somehow uh, had a role in the development of the Jigmaster and that. That's incorrect, at least as far as I understand that's incorrect. And uh, he was uh, kind of alone. He died. His uh, wife took over for a little while and supporting the products and then they kind of went away, which is a shame. But they were so well made, 
They're made of graphite, they're made of stainless steel. You, look at this, this reel is probably 20 or 25 years old. And uh, there's no indication of wear on that outside case. All right, I think if I remove the three of these, I'm kind of flying a little bit by year here. I've done duels, I just don't uh, recall all of them, but I did recall that, that uh, those three come out. And um, we can remove the spool. And here's one of the issues I think that we had with this. It looks like the, the uh, burring for this one is kind of stuck on the spool there. That's probably why it was making the noise. Let's, we'll get that off. Oh, that one made it to the floor. Not a problem because I have the replacement burring and I can always find it on the floor. Let's take a look behind. There's nothing you have to service on this back side. Plastic, plastic uh, click tongue, plastic click ring, stainless steel. Um, set screw and there's the cavity for the burring that just fell on the floor. Well, the uh, that makes it easy and you can also see why nothing is rusting in there or why we don't have any issues with uh, green and the like. It's because of the materials that we used in this particular reel. Well, we're going to just set the case aside for a moment. Just want to clean up a little bit here on my table. Get a little bit more organized than I've been. I'm going to shut the camera off for a moment. I'll be right back. Well, in filming time, I'm right back. It took me a minute or two. I wanted to get a kitchen scrubby. I couldn't find it on my table. And I used that with a rod and reel cleaner just to clean up some of the film and that that may be left on the reel. I just find out it's, it's not very abrasive, but it does enable you to clean that stuff up. And uh, it does its job very nicely. All right. We're just going to clean that up. Grab a paper towel to wipe off the excess. And then we'll show you how to insert, service the inside of the reel and replace those bearings. I did pick up the other bearing from the floor for all of you that were worried that it would become a lost soul. It's uh, now back in my possession. But the only importance about that is when I do a reel repair for a customer, I like to return the parts that were replaced. It's uh, I have no use for them, they're, they're worn, and it just shows the customer that yes, indeed, you did replace the parts, you didn't just say you replaced the parts. And unfortunately, there are some folks out there that kind of say they service the reel or they replace the parts, and I get these uh, services come in, or reels come in for service, that it was just service last year, and it's obvious that if it was service, somebody just threw a couple of drops of grease somewhere but never service the reel. Okay, I'm going to remove that cap that holds the bearing. We'll put the first bearing in. And if you need to get these out, there's uh, that's why you're seeing maybe in the foreground here some picks. You, you want to kind of get a pick of some description, bent or otherwise, that will pull it out a lot of the time. Not all the time, sometimes these are stubborn but uh, usually you can get them out. That's what I had to do on the other side when I went to, to go order these. And these screw in as a tensioner for the spool as well as a burring cap. All right, that's on the side. This one's clean. I guess I can take that uh, little scrub pad again. We'll do this one one more time here. Put a little bit of the uh, cleaner on there, run it around. Clean up the spool. And again, this reel has been very clean, very noisy. And that's what led the owner to ask if he could re replace the bearings. And when he asked about replacing the bearings, he also said, could you do me a favor and do that carbon tax upgrade at the same time? Well, we'll do that. While I'm uh, taking off the bridge then, I want to encourage you to ask questions if you have questions to be asked. And if you do, just leave them in the comment section. I do try to answer the questions there each morning, and uh, for the most part, I will uh, let you know the answer. If I know the answer, if I don't, I'll let you know that I don't. And sometimes, uh, well, first of all, there's so many reels and I just can't know the answers to everything. But uh, like this morning, I had a question on a uh, Zebco 66. Could you tell me a little bit about the history of it? Well, I knew approximately when it was manufactured. Not much more than that, but if, uh, if that helps a little bit in terms of uh, that, I think I commented on that and I commented on the uh, value of the reel. So um, 
and sometimes it's just going to be a general thing. Sometimes it's like, how do you set the spring on a, a Daiwa spinning reel or something? And if I know that, I'm certainly going to pass that information along as well. Well, those four bridge screws, there's two long ones that belong in the bottom, two short ones belong in the top. And uh, what I like to do when I, when I have this is I want to pull that jack up. This whole assembly is going to come out. It's all one piece, but I like to pull it up anyway. The next thing we'll do then is we'll clean the case. I'm going to use some penetrating oil as a degreaser. This case is pretty clean. In this case, I'm just using WD-40. I don't have a preference for penetrating oils. I use them as degreasers. I don't use them as lubrication. I just like to use it to, to get rid of the old greases and buildups. And that's what we're doing here. That and paper towels should clean up the case nicely. Again, it wasn't wasn't dirty to begin with, so we're in pretty good condition there. Take that case and we'll set that aside as well. And here's the uh, what's going on with that new old reel now. So you're going to notice that <coughs> we have a, a free spool release lever and the spring here in case maybe you've taken it apart and you're looking at this video because you're trying to figure out how it goes back together again. That controls a jack underneath. <coughs> that jack is going to, to move in and move out. You'll see the yoke moves up and down. The springs for the yoke are controlled by two E-clips. And then we have our main gear and our pinion gear. So this whole stack will come off because we removed the C-clip that's up top. You want to do that to clean this up first. Take a paper towel, wipe off the excess there. And now you want to get to these E-clips that are holding on the spring. This is a, a section where you can grab it by both corners and push it out. Usually hand strength will do that. And then watch the spring underneath. You don't want that to fly when that happens. So there's your E-clip again. I'm going to put this right on my, my bench here. I'm going to put the spring there as well. We want to repeat that for the other side. And again, you just got to be careful. These things tend to fly. I'll take that one off. Both of those are going on my bench. Now I can remove the jack. And you'll see that the anti-reverse dog kind of removed itself. So we'll show you how to reset that uh, in a moment. What I want to do here is the same thing we just did on the inner case. We want to go ahead put a little bit of penetrating oil or otherwise as a degreaser. Get what little grease is hanging around on the bridge. Get that off. And we'll be in, in good position there. Okay. I want to move this to the up position. Like that. I'm going to go to reset. Actually, I want it in the down position. Silly me. Alright, this is your anti-reverse dog. That's going to interact with the click ratchet in the back here. And what you want to do before you reinstall that click or gear sleeve is to put a little bit of grease onto the bridge shaft. Now you want to take that anti-reverse dog and you're going to be pushing up on this now or you can just simply grab it, hold it and put the dog in like that. So that's how your clip on your anti-reverse dog is going to ride, but it's completely out of position at the moment. So what you want to do is grab your sleeve, bring that in, and then before you seat the sleeve all the way down, pull back on the anti-reverse dog so that you can set it in place. And that's how it's properly set in place there. So the spring goes over the top to keep tension down on it, and the anti-reverse dog goes in the the click ratchet right here. That's properly set. Okay, we wanted to clean the pinion gear and the yoke. The yoke is perfectly clean. Inspect the teeth on the pinion gear. Make sure that they're all uniform and not bent, chipped, or cracked. And once you do that, go ahead and put some fresh fishing reel grease on there. I use pen precision reel grease for the reel grease. Um, not really partial to which greases you use, but please make sure it's a fishing reel grease. Alright, we'll just put a little bit of grease on the 
both sides of this where it's going to spin. And then you're going to see two sides to this. You're going to see a, a raised side and an indented side. The indented side is to the back, as is the piece for the spool. Go ahead and lay that down. Take pictures along the way. This is what your picture when you had it out should have looked like. And now we can go ahead and put that back together. We'll take the spring that we have on our bench here. And now I probably have to remove my glove, but it's okay because the cleaning is done. But to do this, you, you need a little bit of dexterity. You're going to push down on the spring to clear that channel for the e-clip to ride. Hold the spring in place while you set that in its sides and then pull it back in. And that is properly set. So once you do that, you're going to do that again for the other side. So we'll take that spring, place that on there, get your E-clip ready, push down on the spring to compress it, and clear the little groove and get the E-clip started in the, in the position. Sometimes this is easy, sometimes it's not. It really doesn't become easy when it's trying to do this for the camera. Once you have that, again, push that in. Just like that. Now we have two that are properly set, and you should test it at this point. Move it in, move it out, move it in, move it out. Make sure that nothing's flying off the, the rails there. And you're good to go with that. All right. Should take a picture at this point. This is your bottom washer. That stays on here. And remember, we're going to change out now the, uh, the drag washers to carbon tex. And there is a note on here that says that this setup works on the uh, Jigmaster 500s as well. I get these from uh, smoothdrag.com. And uh, they're a good source for all kinds of dry washers. Well, I just noticed that they gave us the bottom washer. So that one that I just put on the post, well, we can uh, take that one off and put the carbon tax on. Now, sometimes you'll actually see this. Sure, carbon tech washers may be installed dry or lightly greased. Cal's Universal uh, Grease is recommended. Well, I just happen to have a case of Cal's Universal Grease. I'm going to go ahead and put my glove back on. And uh, I get asked that question a lot. Why didn't you grease or why did you grease? And uh, quite honestly, there's, there you go. It's optional on carbon tex. I'm going to take my glove as a tool, dip it in the Cal's Universal Grease. And what's lightly greased? You put it on and then you wipe it dry so that only the grease remains in the cross hatches. All right, that's number one. When you take your reel apart now, you're going to notice you probably didn't need the washers. I'm seeing a lot of dirt and the like in here. And we're just going to bring these up. These are the originals. The first thing you want to do is clean out the case inside of your main gear. Make sure it's nice and clean. Make sure the back is clean too. Do the same thing we did here with your pinion gear. Inspect all of the uh, teeth, the grooves and the like. Make sure that they're all uniform, not damaged in any way. Then let's get a good amount of grease on this one too. You don't have to get the grease in, even, in every tooth. And please do not overload it. Overloading it is only going to throw the grease off in the case when the reel spins. I'll put that on top now because it's always easier on these to uh, just go ahead and uh, assemble it on the reel if you're uh, working on these. All right, so we'll do this three times now. You're going to dip it into the grease. You're going to use your gloved hand to spread it 
I'm going to wipe it thin and place it into the drag set. There's two sides on a Carbon Tex washer, it doesn't matter which side. One is a very fine cross hatching, the other is rather rough, doesn't matter which way it goes. There are three metal washers and a belt washer. Two of the metal washers are called keyed washers. They are rectangular in the center and round on the outside. The middle washer is called an eared washer. It's round in the middle and has two studs that stick out of it. They kind of look like ears, hence the word eared washers. All right, the keyed washers belong on the outside, top and bottom. That's the bottom. We're going to do this again. Place that one in, and now the middle washer is the eared washer with the stud. And then we got one more washer here. Do the same thing again. Wipe it dry. Get rid of that grease off the table there, and put that back in now. And then we can put the last of the metals on, the second keyed washer which goes on top, and the bell washer. Now the bell washer has a bulge in it here. It's uh, meant for tension on the star adjuster. I'm going to put that up. The peak of that bulge should be facing out. Now this one has a little bit of greening. I guess that's what we saw inside the case. It's probably marine brass or something. I'm just going to use a a little bit of steel wool here just to knock that off. Clean that up. And we can go ahead and install that now. Okay, so let's go reinstall the bridge then. Just grab your bridge, look for your slot. That's where your free spool release is going to go. And just kind of line everything up. So that it sits in place. What you're really going for is there's two cavities here for that um, uh, the spring assemblies inside this case. I probably should have showed it before I put it in. But you want a nice solid snap that's going to tell you that you've got that correct. Let's go grab our four bridge screws. And it doesn't hurt. I don't normally do it or don't do it a lot. But it doesn't hurt to put a drop of oil onto the thread at the beginning of each screw. That'll keep it lubricated. These are stainless steel screws, so we're not going to worry that much about these rusting. But uh, some of the reels where they're using steel screws, you may want to just make a practice of putting a drop of oil on those. It'll keep the, uh, the screw threads from uh, rusting out on you. Okay, we've got the Long screws below, the short screws above, and this reassembles your bridge. You can give this a, a little test now. Just give it a ride, make sure that it's working properly. All right, where's that uh, kitchen scrubby? I want to do one more time on this. Let's get the outside of this case done. It's kind of a cleaner and a wax. We'll go ahead and have the paper towel to complete that. And finish on the little page as well. All right, let's go to the spool. This one had the, the bearing that was stuck on the spool there. So a little bit of grease so that it run, when it rides on that inside race, it'll, it'll do fine there. Go ahead and put that in. And I was asked, well, what, what difference is the the ceramic bearing is going to make. Well, they're not going to rust. That's probably the advantage to it. Uh, they are going to be a little bit more noisy. So just be aware if you are upgrading to the ceramic bearing. I don't think it's going to be the quietest reel. They, uh, the ceramics do tend to make a little bit more noise uh, than the others. All right. The trim ring goes on. We had the two long screws go below, one on each side. And the short screw goes up top. If you've forgotten, and if I forgot to mention, one of the best ways to, to remind yourself of that is to take pictures along the way. Those pictures are invaluable if you get lost as you're, uh, as you're doing the reel. 
You can always go back and reference the parts orientation or what came out first or what went in last and so on. All right, those two are done. One more up top here now, the short one. That's your reassembly of the reel. Well, we don't have much left here. We have a little bit, not much. What we want to do next is we want to get the star adjuster. And the star adjuster has two sides to it. There's a bulge side below. You can see that it's a raised portion. That's the side that goes down. Make sure that when you do this that you have this going on square. Don't, uh, don't force it if it's not going on easily. Stop and uh, take a relook at that. All right. And we had this bell washer, and that bell washer was upside down. It should be, again, the peak going to the inside of this. Next up, then, is the handle washer. Then the handle. Then we have that little plastic insert. And this is where you want to go ahead and put the last of your Eclipse on. You might remember that this is the first one we did. And this one gets a little tight for me, so I'm going to grab this little pliers that I use. This is a micro pliers. I'm going to grab it by the tab to get it started and push in as best I can. Hold that because it's another one of these that can fly. And then pull it in the rest of the way. So that's how it came when we open this thing up. And then there's only one more piece left here before we do that test. And that is to tighten this down now. And I use an offset wrench here, or offset box wrench. You can use uh, a uh, socket if you like. All right. Let's see how we did. Uh, I'm not quite sure if we're in the, the crank mode. We certainly are with that. Wow, that's nice and loud. Okay, what we have is a very loose spool, so we want to take advantage of this time to go ahead and tighten up the adjusters. Remember, we just set these in. It should have a little bit of play, but not a lot of play. Now, since we took it out of both sides, I'm going to try and tighten this one up. You can center the spool with the adjusters. There you go. So here's your ceramic bearings. Now, that's going to spin nicely, and if you just back this off a little bit, I think I'm pretty much down there. That'll control the speed of the spool. If you want it to, to be a little bit slower, bring it in. You can see it'll get approximately uh, one revolution, and you back it out to the way you feel comfortable casting the reel. And again, if you just have a slight side-to-side -side movement, that's best of all. Well, there you go. There's your ceramic bearings. Let's uh, go ahead and crank the reel now. Operating beautifully. Make sure that your drag washers are nice and tight. They are. And that's it. That's your service of the Newell 235-5 uh, saltwater fishing reel. To our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for all it is that you do to keep us safe. Uh, your efforts truly are appreciated. And to everyone, I wish you great fishing. Have a wonderful day. And uh, please stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.